Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Friday, February 2nd, 2024. I was anxious for today to arrive. <clears throat> Yesterday was a tough day for my iron condors, and so I was really looking forward to getting back in there. Probably kind of like a Athlete whose team loses a game, you want to get back out on the field. Uh, man, some crazy, crazy earnings yesterday. Um, Meta and Amazon, especially Meta, up over 16%. Um, Amazon up over 6%. Uh, Apple's down, or Apple's down 3.5%. Um, S&P shot up overnight. And then job the jobs uh, report came out and it was better uh, more jobs added uh, which actually is a, not a, not a good thing for interest rate cuts and so uh, market is starting to come back down so it looked like that earlier before the jobs report that uh, a Rick would be in play but doesn't look like that now so the Dow has gone negative. NASDAQ still a little positive, up a third of a percent. S&P flat. So, man. You know, I was thinking today when I saw that the S&P was up, uh, S&P futures were up like, I don't know, two-thirds of a percent. I was like, and I, I never really tracked the, uh, you know, if, if, if the S&P is up more than uh, a quarter of a percent, that's a one signal for, for putting on a RIC, which – was a winner yesterday, um, so I was kind of wondering uh, the correlation between adding a RIC when there's you get those situations uh, where the S&P is up so much. Uh, is there a, f a factor against the regular iron condors because of the the big movement? And so I posted in the live chat channel that I'm going to start tracking the. Uh, I'll just put it along with my. Uh, Zero DTE profit loss, just the uh, expected move, and what, and then what the market opens and closes at. So to give me, you know, as time goes by, you know, over a couple of months, I can look and see, okay, where are my where are my losing days? Where is the expected move? What was the expected move? What was the what was the range? The actual range. So I'll be able to figure all that in. <clears throat> so my right, bell is rung. So let's see if we can get a. Couple mighty 90s or a couple runners here. Usually pretty light here on a Friday. So S SPX opens at about 49. Expected move in the S and P it was about twenty eight. Now it's about twenty six. So let's see what that does. Morning, Al Piero, Frank, Ken, Sanre, rookie trader, fast, Krish, Bianca. Nice seeing you all in the live stream today. Morning, Deox. And we got some juice in this in the in SPX for some iron condors, that's for sure.
Yeah, I don't know, San Marino, if it's going to gap up or not with that jobs report. It's definitely brought it down. That was the added jobs was what they announced this morning. Which is not good for inflation. Something else I'm interested in looking at here is the for zero DTE is the expected move and then how wide short strikes could be on a zero DTE iron condor. Something I'm going to look at because if the, if the short strikes are wider than the expected move, theoretically that would be a time, good time to, to, uh, it would, it would, it would be good to put that trade on, you know, first thing in the morning. Second bar here. So we'll be looking for some volume bigger than the first, same direction. Uh, yeah, I've never never traded that. I don't really ever trade any ETFs, so I haven't. I would before I traded them. I want to make sure I'm I paper trade those. Is it's not really one. We don't have ETFs on our list to trade. Nvidia pushing up. Hmm. NASDAQ up one oh eight, S and P has gone positive. 
Dow is still down 165. NVIDIA, potential upside volume runner here. And today we trade the 7 DTE. So make sure you, you're not on the 0 DTE for these unless you want to. But yeah, we trade the 7 DTE. It moves a little slower. Not as much theta decay. Yeah, it's real easy to get if you do zero DT SPX that it's pretty easy to make that mistake on a Friday. Which could be a good mistake at the, you know if it goes up if it goes in your direction. AMD getting close to the volume bar, but it's pulling back here a little bit. So is it gonna? Nvidia, I don't think it's gonna get there. AMD is cl closer than NVIDIA. It's awfully close to being red, too. Didn't quite get there. I'm, I'm going to pass on AMD. Just I've played those as upside runners before. When it's that close, but... I've also seen him roll over. <laughs> yeah, you know, NVIDIA, it's like, is that stock ever going to come down? Check for some mighty 90s here now. One thing I definitely want to see today is better theta decay. S&P trying to push up, NASDAQ pushing up.
A lot of stairs stepping down in volume. You see that a lot on a Friday. Apple pushing up. Bix coming down a little bit. Yeah, Zoom has a little mighty 90 here. But I don't like it. I don't like to trade it. First off, it's already bouncing up, so you wouldn't get into that. Intel, that bar is getting close to as big as the first, so I'm going to stay away from that. That could be a downside volume runner. No, nothing, nothing in Tesla. Boeing potential, a little bit of separation there, a little mighty, maybe mighty 90. Let me check toss because that bar also is getting big. Yeah, I'd say that probably qualifies for a mighty 90. I want to see, I'd like to see it maybe push down one more time here. It's real close to a downside volume runner, but it, but it is, it, it didn't get there. Meta, Jesus. S&P breaking out a little bit. NASDAQ flying high. Yeah, I hope, you know, I hope I hope that just everything everything pushes good with the mighty 90 short here actually. Hope everything gets the pushing out of the way right now and then it can just chop the rest of the day. So if Goog pushes up to this pivot, I might try to get in on a short. And I would trade the 140 puts. I'm going to... Something else I like about mighty 90s when you have pivots and something comes up to a pivot and, you know, gets forced down. In fact, I may just jump in and then maybe add to it if it gets up there. Filled at 153 in Goog on the 140 puts. And then I always, I always do my mighty 90s so I can add to it. Uh, why isn't Tesla a mighty 90? Because, I mean, I like to see more more volume separation than this. I mean, it's just barely bigger. A lot of people always ask me that. It's a good, it's a, it's a, that's a frequent question. You know, they see it, they see it being just a, a little bit bigger. And they think mighty 90. Well, no, it's, you, if you go back to the course, I mean, Steve, 
specifically says you want to see some good volume separation. I mean, look at the separation between Goog and Tesla. I mean, that, that <clears throat> it's a lot different than just being barely, barely bigger. Wow, look at AMD go. See, like NVIDIA too. Like that's not what we look for in a Mighty 90. That's very similar to Tesla. Oh, crap. I need to get an order in and Goog. Build it a buck 80 to close half of my Goog. <laughs> Almost forgot there. Wow. Yeah. So MU could be getting a mighty 90. Yep. So you can kind of see that too there, San Ray, how it's already. Man, what a push. I get out of another another Goog at dollar ninety five. Build a dollar ninety five in Goog. Wow. All right, MU. Nice mighty 90 there. I'll do the 48 puts in MU. I'm going to see if it'll push back up. And you can see the difference of the separation of volume too on MU. Gonna jump in here. Build it a buck fifty two in MU. Yeah, I need to get another order in. I was messing with MU. Wow. That has moved. Build at 240 to close another, close a quarter of my Goog. That is what you want to see out of a Mighty 90. MU still pushing up. So I could have probably waited a little bit, but that's okay. So uh, Google's gonna looks like right now it's giving us a second red bar, so that would be time to exit. If you wanted to, you could leave a little runner on. I would add to my MU at like a buck thirty-five. Goog, don't you flip on us. Um... M MU is the 86 puts.
Got a couple minutes left here. AMD still rocking it. <laughs> S&P tried to push up and then kind of got forced back down. Good mighty 90, Goog is. I'm going to close my Goog. Build at 241 to close Goog. The mighty 90. I was trying to add to MU, but it just didn't quite get to a buck 35. Sometimes I leave a runner on, but I didn't today, you know, in case Goog continues to push down. Oh, really? Yeah, I just have Goog on mine. Hey. MU is really, really struggling to, to get through the highs of yesterday. I definitely could have got a better fill if I would have waited just a bit longer. Let's see what else we got. Not much. Yeah, but no, no real signals here with AMD. It could consolidate and then continue to push like a continuation runner does. Try to add to my MU here. Let's see where this push gets me. Build it a buck thirty five. That's what I was waiting for. So how I do that on a mighty ninety and I position myself when I position size to be able to add. Um so I got filled at a buck fifty two, so roughly a buck fifty. So ten percent is fifty is fifteen cents. So I take fifteen cents minus one fifty. It puts me at about 135. That way, if I get filled at 130, so if I, if I get filled at 135 like I did, I will get out of, of half my position with 10% profit, which would be 150, just getting back to my original fill. That's how I do that. Futures popped right back up. Yeah, 
good, good, good get out and goog. The muse hanging on. Just need a good couple push downs in MU like I did, like we got with Goog. The Dow's really just pretty much not going anywhere. Airbnb, that's a nice looking mighty 90 right there. See how the volume separation. And it's too wide a bid ask. Airbnb always, for some reason, has just really wide bid ask. Uh, MU is a, oh, first off, welcome, yada, yada. Uh, MU is a mighty 90. That was the strategy I traded for MU. Had the one bar here bigger than the previous. Nice little volume separation. Meta, still pushing. No, no. Uh, MU's got one red bar, but that's about it. Thank you. 
the the consumer sentiment is out for January 79, whatever that means. <clears throat> Doesn't appear to have affected anything quite yet. And he's kind of asleep. Not much else shaking right now. I've got an order at 152 to close half my MU. Looks like we got one red bar there. Trying to give us a second bar. Popping up. Definitely want to get out on this bar on a stock that is strong. Because a lot of times you you know you get a push up, a little pause, and then a continuation to the upside. And MU a lot of times correlates with AMD and and, and Nvidia. So darn it. Get back down there. Sometimes in these situations, I'll just cut a mighty 90 if it's part of, a, you know, the, these stocks have just been ripping up. So I may just cut this one. Just kind of looking to see what everything else is doing here. NVIDIA is pausing. I could see it ripping upward, upside continuation. Be nice if Emmy would just come back down, give us a red bar, then we'll get out and it can do whatever it wants. See how AMD push up, just kind of a slight pause here. It'd be interesting to see if it gets through highs of day. I mean, it may sit here and chop for a little bit. Got about a minute 40 left. 
So if it comes down here and, and gives me some red here, I'll just close it. Hopefully in the last minute, it kind of falls back down to where it was. <clears throat> there you go, El Piero. That's how you play that. Nice job, buddy. Yeah, if you could just get out at a break even, that's that's pretty pretty good on a situation like this. So I'm gonna be getting out too here, just in case this wants to rip up. Got one minute left. Futures are pretty steady. Yeah, it's probably time to start looking at those. All right, I'm gonna get out here. Filled at a dollar forty to get out of MU. I'm sure it'll drop. Yeah, it's still dropping. I should have waited another fifteen seconds. Oh well. All right. Oh well, yeah, look at it now. <laughs> you rat. Just a couple pennies difference. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at futures here. Coming down a little bit. So it's kind of consolidating a little bit. Expected move is about 23 for the rest of the day. Yeah, about 23 points. So let's take a look. I'd probably go with forty nine thirty five. Oh, somebody was posted in the chat. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Never mind. Good job, Ken. Probably the 4940s. And 4895s. Fifty point wings. Take a peek at that. Uh, what exactly is trade like? Uh, it's the, the zero DT iron condors, San Ray. All right, try to get filled at six. Let's see here. I'm on the 4940s, 4895s. So that's what I'm going to do. 
Let's see if I get filled here. 50 point wings with the tracking of EM. Uh, I did a Rick yesterday, Benji. I, I mean, I just didn't post it because Steve posted it. I just did what he I just did what he did. something else about it is it uh yeah i'm actually gonna present i have a court there's a course uh on february 8th sign ray that i'm gonna kind of explain how i do my iron condors all based on price movement so it doesn't look like that's gonna get filled so i'm gonna cancel it all right guys i will post my iron condor in the live chat channel so once I can get in there and get filled on one. So uh, let's take a look at the live stream. Obviously, we'll be back for power hour. And Steve does not have the, G the February in there yet. So I'll see you back at power hour, guys, today. Peace.